lovely, lovely imps, we are about to react to a video. Um, some people have said this is a drama video. Some people have said it's not really a drama video. I know nothing about it except for the very vague things that other people have said. It's a video called BreadTube Has a Patriarchy Problem by the channel Catherine. Um, Catherine is a, uh, a, 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 a growing YouTube channel with approximately 12,000 subscribers, so a little smaller than our channel here. Um, and I'm actually super interested to see what Catherine um, has to say. Let's, let's be strong, all right? I want to watch this video because I'm interested to hear about that. Because I will say that uh, there sure are a lot of, uh, uh, there, there sure is a, a, an imbalance uh, in male to female transsexuals creating on the internet. <laughs> you thought it was going a different. No, there's a, uh, there's definitely a gender divide uh, on the internet generally, but it continues even into BreadTube. And I think it's, uh, uh, I think it's uh, uh, important to acknowledge, and I'm interested in this video. I wanted to watch it on my own time, but then I decided why would I watch it on my own time when I could just watch it with my imps? And that would be more fun. So without any further ado, Let's listen to BreadTube Has a Patriarchy Problem by the channel Catherine. And uh, of course, I will uh, I will link the channel and everything. Um, I mean, I'll link the video right here. If you ever want to go watch this on your own time or whatever, here is the link to the video. Um, yeah. It was the audio in the video. You'll get what we mean. Let's find out. Hold on. I have to, I have to keep adjusting the video size so that we can see it because I'm not on my normal I'm not on my normal setup if you guys are like why does demon mama keep having to readjust the video like a noob yeah all right let's do this let's do it the opinions and arguments in this video are my own and are not meant to indicate the beliefs of those featured in this video okay that's fair all right, that's fair. That's fair, that's a good start, all right. Disclaimers are good. Sister outsider, black lesbian poet, Audrey Lord, paraphrase. I'm gonna turn this up just a tiny bit. Phrasing Paolo Freire wrote, the true focus of revolutionary change is never merely the oppressive situations we seek to escape, but that piece of the oppressor which is planted deep within each of us. I think on the left in general, we are good at confronting systems of oppression like patriarchy. Is, is, is the audio loud or quiet compared to my voice? I can't tell. Um, okay, her audio is quiet. Okay, I'll turn it up then. As something that is Whoa, out there in broader external structures, but we give very little attention to the pieces of the oppressor that are planted within ourselves and our movements, so that we end up replicating in our worldviews, frameworks, ways of being, actions, and consciousnesses the exact same systems we seek to destroy. So this video is about the ways in which I see the patriarchy planted within the people and community of BreadTube and how we can begin to recognize and eradicate the seeds of oppression within ourselves and our movements. For those who don't know, BreadTube, otherwise known as LeftTube or left-wing YouTube, refers to the creators and community around left-wing content online. Whilst most of what I say can be universalized to leftist movements in general, I'm going to be focusing specifically on the far left side of BreadTube because I think this is the most important platform for the sharing of radical subversive thought that would otherwise in mainstream media be censored 
or shut down. What we- Wrong! That's us, the streamers. We're the real ones. We're the better ones. We get more views than you. Just kidding. Just joking. Obviously, that's just a meta joke because of what we were, uh, what we were talking about, you know? Wait, was there a photo? Was there a Voss jump scare? Did I miss the Voss jump scare? Is it red tube or bread tube? <laughs> Shut up. Do here is incredibly important and failing to address patriarchy on the left could have fatal consequences for our movements. Valhalla video says Vosh watched this video for two minutes and then criticized her spe speaking style. That's because Vosh is a Britophobe. And to be honest, can you blame him? Okay. Can you blame him? As, as Vosh is a red-blooded American, it is the right of every American to permanently hate every British person for what they did to us. You know they tried to tax us without giving us any representation? Do you, do you understand that they tried to do that to us back in 1776 and we will never forgive them? Their children, their children's children, their children's 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 children will always bear the curse of Americans going, we refuse to clap for you. When we land in Heathrow Airport in London, we refuse to clap when the plane touches down for what you did to us. Yeah. Let's continue. FD Signifier made a brilliant video about the racist framework that underpins Breadtube, so I'll be focusing mostly on patriarchy today. That being said, as Professor Kimberly Crenshaw pointed out in 1989, capitalism, white supremacy, patriarchy, and so on are intersecting systems. Ignore that I just disappeared off the off the corner of the camera. I I definitely wasn't uh, uh, desperately adjusting my bra because it was ripping the piercing out of my nipple. Don't worry about it, okay? Uh, if you are mad at me, then that's because you have a patriarchy problem. Systems of oppression, so this video will inevitably be imperfect and incomplete. I'm also going to be making some generalizations about BreadTube. Of course, there are always exceptions. On top of that, I'm white, cis, able bodied, European, so if there are perspectives I'm missing, please share them with me in the comment section. I'm not going to be calling out specific people or using clips as evidence of what I'm talking about because I think that just results in defensiveness, drama, and moves the discussion to a few bad apples. When in reality, I think there is a whole ecosystem creating this phenomenon and we are all complicit to varying degrees. And okay, I think that this is a, this could be a strong or a weak starting point. But I am thinking based on what she has said so far that this is going to be a strong starting position. And the reason why I say it could be either is that sometimes people say, I'm not gonna be called naming names or using clips. And then they just sort of spend the entire video subtweeting a, like two people. And I think that that can be cowardly. But I don't, I genuinely don't think that's what's happening here. I think that this is actually an attempt to address the problem. And, and I'm going to hold out hope that that's the case. Um, yeah. So, yeah. This is just my prediction based on, on the way that she's explained this beginning section. I'm going to say this is probably a strong move. It's actually interesting. Part of the reason why I wanted to watch this after the conversation that we just had with Sisyphus55 is because I had a feeling that pr conversation would be productive and that we would end up talking about uh, uh, the ways in which you can have disagreements with other lefties um, while, uh, while still remaining productive and useful and good. Yeah. 
uh, Uncle Gumball says, bread tube has a patriarchy problem, almost like it's a problem everywhere. Yes, but um, but again, um, if you're if if bread tube is seeking to be a platform for for forwarding liberatory leftist po politics, then it's important that bread tube grapple with its own problems, right? Um, and this is this it's true, it is a problem, but like <laughs> it get, it can it can be really bad, okay? I've talked about this. Um, if you are a movement that is pitching yourself, uh, to especially if you are a movement that is currently led um, by people who don't necessarily belong to a group or belong to only one subsection of a group, um, and you are pitching yourself as an avenue for liberation to a large marginalized demographic, um, it's fairly important that you uh, actually build trust and also actually address the issues that that group take seriously, otherwise that group simply won't support you and you will not be able to accomplish what you want to do. It's a give and a take. Um, so I think conversations like this are actually really important because they help, um, they help uh, movements w of whatever type and whatever size, even ones like YouTube movements, self-reflect and make improvements. Correct. Yes. Silent says, plus the fact that patriarchy is, is everywhere isn't exactly an excuse to refuse to try to just deconstruct patriarchy in specific spaces. Agreed. Agreed. Let's continue. This video isn't about making anyone feel guilt or blame. It's an invitation for introspection. This is crucial, scary, challenging, but ultimately deeply rewarding and transformative work. So what do I actually mean by internalized patriarchy or the patriarchy that lives within? Well, gender is not inherent, fixed or innate. It is a social construct that from birth assigns us binary roles of either a man or a woman. These roles are socialized into us at Feminine, masculine, submissive, dominant. Oh my god, okay, this last one, I saw this last one. Takes forever to do anything. Masculine, takes two seconds to shower. I'm sorry, okay, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a bit of a distraction, but I have to give credit to SDL here. I don't know if Sock Done Left is in chat. I know that sometimes SDL is here, but for some reason, <laughs> this just made me think of this Sock Done Left tweet from last night. Here's Sock Done Left tweeting this one. Just gonna lean over and let this little poot out. <laughs> and there's this guy who says, the fuck is that smell? And then these guys over here say, that biker guy smells like shit. And then it says society. <laughs> and this is true. You could make the same meme and put it over gender, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I read this meme at like 3 a.m. last night and it literally made me cry laughing and it's gonna do it again. <laughs> what the fuck is that smell? That biker guy smells like shit. <laughs> Gender. <laughs> fucking true. Listen, fucking pretty women can smell like shit too, all right? Trust me. I've encountered some, all right? Some very beautiful women who smell like fucking shit. Listen to me. You're trying to tell me you're trying to tell me You're trying to tell me that those fucking Gwyneth Paltrow goop user people who put like rotten eggs in their vagina don't smell like shit you telling me Let's continue I know I'm being very I'm distracting from this very serious video, but <sighs> either a man or a woman. 
these roles are socialised into us at every level of society, from our families, education system, media and governments, such that it might not only become what we think, but... Posadas John says, no, the eggs are expensive stones like jade. Yeah, but they're porous. That's the problem. That's why. They're dangerous. They're dangerous. <laughs> Nut says, now this is theory. <laughs> Cloworm in chat in YouTube chat says, a man farts, no one bats an eye, but if a woman farts, everyone loses their mind. Okay, all right. Okay, everybody. Let's get serious now, okay? We have to focus. Okay, let's get let's get serious, okay? We're we're not we're not being we're not being we're not being good right now, okay? All right, let's go. That biker guy smells like shit. But how we think. This harms women as the subordinated group, queer people who don't fit the gender binary, and less discussed True. is how this also harms men. In How Can I Get Through To You, family therapist Terence Real calls this early indoctrination into patriarchal thinking the normal traumatization of boys. The way we turn boys into True. men, he writes, True. is through injury and violence. We force men to wear a mask of a false self and reward them for this act of soul murder. We sever them from their capacity to emote, to feel, to be vulnerable. We subject them to sadomasochistic power struggles designed to turn them into patriarchs. Their suffering is as concrete as empirically observed trends of poor health, alienation, overwork, shallow relationships, and unaliving themselves. So when I talk about Fredtube internalizing patriarchy, the core of what I'm getting at is the wounds, the traumas that we carry inside of ourselves that result from this coercive indoctrination into patriarchy. This pain is internalized, it festers and gets projected outwards in subtle yet pernicious ways. Women's work alongside other marginalised groups is everywhere undervalued, undermined and underestimated, especially when women step into the traditional domain of men like politics and Breadtube is no exception. And I know some of you will be thinking, well, aren't some of the top Breadtube creators women? How can you say women's work is undervalued? But just because some women manage to prevail in these political spaces does not mean that structural exclusions do not exist. Politics at every level, grassroots, in the media and institutionally, has always been controlled and dominated by white cis men. They get to dictate what are considered valid ideas. But the people who react by being like, oh, but there's two or three successful uh, uh, marginalized people at the top of a sub niche on YouTube truly miss the point and they don't realize it, but they sound exactly like the people who are like, whoa, there's like one, there's like a black character in a Lord of the Rings movie and they're like, oh, this wokeness taking over everything. When it's like, for the last 100 years, every single role in every single movie was played by white people because of, unless you were, unless it was like a background role or a minor character or something humiliating. Uh, and then they like have a bad reaction to like a, a black person being, it's the exact same thing. It's the exact same mentality when people go like, oh yeah, well, what about ContraPoints? It's... It's crazy, especially if you, oh my God, especially if you uh, are pointing at the space uh, that's like the the most critical of patriarchy in this particular instance, because what we're talking about, the space that's most uh, uh, critical of patriarchy on the entire internet has like 
slightly mo a slightly better ratio and then people go look the problem solved meanwhile it's like that spongebob meme where he's pointing at like the dirty diapers hidden in the wall and it's the rest of the world uh, so silly yeah Well, actually, I think, I don't know. Well, yeah, that's complicated. Yeah, sorry, everybody. We reached our quota. You get to have your one successful person. Uh, and that's, uh, you got to wait 100 years for the next one. S silly. Ideas, topics, and paradigms around politics. That which operates outside of this box is not given the same status or validity. What is accredited correct ways of doing- That's also true, Silent. Yep, that's also true. Politics is then reinforced at every level of society. White cis men then choose like-minded people to work with and promote, and the cycle continues. So unless we intentionally do the work to dismantle the worldview born out of this, what we consider valid ways of doing politics will still be rooted in a racist and misogynistic framework. On BreadTube, I see this framework manifest in how non-men creators and non-white creators have a much harder time being taken seriously or being seen as intelligent, competent, or committed. I think women's work is much more frequently written off as liberal, reactionary, bougie, revisionist, idealist, or apolitical. Whereas men from the same backgrounds and demographics creating similar types of content yep. are not. And of course, most of us will never consciously explicitly think women have less to offer, but biases are revealed when you see who we share, who we work with, who we watch, what theorists we are encouraged to listen to, what books we are recommended to read. It seems to me we are given a very prescriptive, homogenous, white man list of voices that are considered worthy of our time. Black feminist writer Bell Hooks has talked about how this can become a vicious cycle. You're so used to seeing your experience as default that you don't even know that your perspective is limited in the first place. I read all kind of work. I read patriarchal men whose work I love, and why? how is it that they can live without reading our work, without wanting to hear our voices, even if it's just to be nosy, to, to, <laughs> to, to, to wonder what those people are thinking. You know? This is such a good point, and it, this, was actually, this was actually something I was going to comment once we got to the end of this segment, which is that um, the, the, the part uh, obviously, I think Bell Hooks is probably putting it a little better than I could, but um, just a little. But, like, um, people don't know what they're missing out on. Like, they literally don't. Um, there's this problem where um, it's not just the creators who reinforce this, but audiences. For example, um, if, if you were just to do uh, an experiment, even in BreadTube, and have a trans woman and a cis man both start their channels at the same time with the same level of production and the same quality, uh, uh, general quality uh, of, of, of commentary and whatever, um, it's just, it, 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 is, it is just very easy to see that lots of people just by default will gravitate towards the cis man because they will perceive it because of their pre-existing biases as more authoritative, more motivating, more real, uh, less frivolous. It, this is just a, a thing. You And obviously you can never have a truly perfect uh, ex scientific experiment of this, but you can see this all the time. There are trans women, like I know personally, of trans creators who are fucking knocking it out the park. They are grinding. They're they're taking their performances to the next level, and they don't even get a fraction of the attention that uh, uh, a a a mediocre 
a cis creator will get. And you and and not only that, like you can see, you can even see this in the levels of of burnout and uh, and the death of channels that are led by trans people who no longer create because not only do they not only do they not get the positive attention. Uh, of somebody who might not even be as good at what they're doing as them, but they also get a fuckload of negative attention on top of that as well, and it drives them to completely, um, to completely uh, and utterly uh, 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 stop creating altogether. And uh, audi like I said, this is not even a problem of the creators themselves, but of the audiences and the biases that audiences are bringing in. And audiences don't realize what they're missing out on they're missing out on a lot they're missing a lot on out on wonderful things um and it's a tragedy it's a genuine tragedy yeah exactly retcon says it's not even easy to be popular as a cis male content creator anyway there's a ton of luck of the draw and then also if you have disadvantages yeah it's really difficult it's difficult to be a creator at all Vixen points out, when I first started seeing you on panels with Vosh, a lot of people were shitting on you for acting in similar ways that Vosh does. It was the first time I really noticed that the, the people like that uh, act like that. Oh, there was a, there's a complete and utter double standard. I would there were there were panels in which I would be significantly less aggressive than Vosh, and I would still be told that I was the aggressive one. You you want to know it was a real trip recently? Recently, I got a I got a, a comment on my videos that told me that if I was more authoritative and confident and aggressive like Vosh, I would have more success. And that was just a goddamn that was a that was a mental a mental like my brain I suffered severe psychic damage. I was literally like <laughs> because I was like for years people just just bombarded me saying, oh, why are you so fucking aggressive and annoying? What, you're the most aggressive and un and shrill and annoying person ever. All you do is fucking yell and be aggressive and you you argue like crazy and, and, and don't listen to anybody ever. And now it's like, and now I go way out of my way to be like extra measured. And people are like, yeah, why don't you be more like Vosh? I'm like, oh, oh. Anyway, uh, uh, whoo, <laughs> it just makes me just, just a little, it makes me jokerified just a little bit. You know, basically, I'm like, what do you mean? Do you mean? Not... Anyway, let's go. Let's continue. Now, part of the construction of dominator privilege is you don't have to think about what are those other people thinking, feeling, hoping, dreaming. And, and I think part of transformation is when you open yourself to wanting... President Sunday said some nice things about you on his Keffel's Brianna Wu video. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't even talk about that. That's really nice to hear. Thank you. Silent says, there's a bit in the Barbie movie that's a rant about how impossible it is to actually be a woman. And that, that really, it, it's like poetry, you know? Yeah, it is. All right, let's continue. To know what those people that are not like you are doing, thinking, being. And this process of devaluation and scrutinization is not a passive process either. It seems to me there's often a violent backlash against women and other marginalized groups who are successful as a way to put them back in their place. Professor Flowers, ContraPoints, Mexi, Lindsay Ellis have all received an onslaught of attacks, harassment, and misogyny. But where is the same level of hatred, vitriol, and deplatforming of the often far more harmful, frequent, Wait, and Why very platform? All received. Professor Flowers, ContraPoints, Mexi, Lindsay Ellis have all received an onslaught of attacks, harassment, and misogyny. 
But where is the same level of hatred, vitriol, and deplatforming of the often far more harmful, frequent, and verifiable wrongdoings of white cis men? Okay, guys, okay, look, look, I'm gonna be 100% real with you for a second, okay? I need you people to listen to me for just a moment. Look, I know that some of you have a little worm in your brain that when you hear the words Professor Flowers, you go and it activates like the fucking Marburg virus yesterday when they sent out the uh, 5G rays and you suddenly go and you need to go and attack and shit. But guys, think about it for just a second, okay? Put Just put your attachment to a drama aside for a minute. I do not, I think that a lot of what Professor Flowers said was fucking stupid and drama baity and cringe and bad, okay? But you, you, you guys know just how much anger, this was just demonstrated in the chat, how much anger there is against Professor Flowers when there are right now in lefty spaces, people who are so much worse and have way, way, I'm talking orders of magnitude bigger platforms currently behaving like complete heinous shitheads that do not receive the same amount of vitriol. People, I, I know that you might be triggered by this being mentioned, but it is simply true that people are way more likely to burn a uh, the same, uh, the same, no, less bad behavior. B bad behavior, but bad behavior to a lesser degree will result in this much burning versus uh, somebody else that gets away with it. I'm sorry. It's just, you guys just need to acknowledge it, okay? You need to be real about it and fucking take the, the worm out of your brain for a minute. No, this person is pretending Vosh gets zero hate and zero pushback. No, I don't. I don't think that's true at all. In fact, I was. Uh, I was thinking of other people in these spaces who fit the definition of white cis men, who uh, whose audiences completely and utterly enable them. Yeah, it, Miss, Mix Dizzy, perfect point, Mix Dizzy. Mix Dizzy says, a good example, I think, is if you compare Vosh antis to each other. People don't tend to hate Hakeem anywhere near as much as they hate Luna. Perfect example. There have been some absolutely deranged uh, dude Vosh haters over the years who have not seen the same level of, of just... I'm ready to go to fucking war. This person is a stupid, annoying bitch. I'm sorry, there is a bias. There's a bias, I'm sorry. There's a bias and you guys have to acknowledge it. I'm not saying that people are wrong for disliking Pro uh, Professor Flowers. I criticized Professor Flowers on two separate videos at the time. You can't get mad at me about this shit. It's not like I'm stumping out here for Professor Flowers, but there is a fucking bias. I'm not defending, uh, Too Clever by Half says, I'm not defending Vosh here. I just don't like genocide de denial no matter what package it comes in. That's true. I'm not talking about the fact of not liking it. I'm not even talking about the fact of renouncing it. I'm talking about the level, the magnitude. The magnitude, okay? Oh, sorry, you said Lu Lua. Professor Flowers. Oh, that's definitely true as well. Va uh, M Dragon in YouTube chat says, Vosh himself has acknowledged this bias in his own audience, if I remember correctly. Yes! I know he has. This is why I'm saying it's not always a problem with the creators themselves, though sometimes it can be. It can be an issue with the audiences, with how the audiences are primed. Vosh on, I have watched, I have been present in Vosh streams when Vosh has been like, chat, can you stop being so fucking sexist and cringe? It's fucking weird. 
and it's something we I, I think that anybody who's who's going to be honest and fair is is uh is is it can acknowledge this can acknowledge that this does happen Yep. All right, we need to continue the video. Let's continue. To me, this double standard is not only indicative of internalized race. A pill says this is unironically a great example of implicit bias. Yep, I think so. Yep, I think so. I think this is perfect. Racism, transphobia, and misogyny but also how when women step out of line in terms of gender expectations, they are targeted as a way to say, get back in your lane, you're enroaching on our territory. And the sad thing is, many do get put in their place. After the violence they received, Mexi left Twitter, Professor Flowers rarely uploads, Lindsay Ellis left YouTube, and ContraPoints has been on and off both platforms. As in so many other men-dominated work fields, we are once again silenced, invisibilized, and so fade into obscurity. What often ends up happening in this context is that in order for non-white cis men to survive and be taken seriously on this platform, we- Was it sexism that made Lindsay leave? abso fucking lutely that was a part of it. If you watch the, if, I know that it's not, uh, I know re-uploads are available, the original isn't available anymore, but if you go and watch the Lindsay Ellis video where she goes through her cancellations, you will realize that so much of it is just sexism. So much of it is just, I'm mad that, uh, that a woman said something that could be interpreted as edgy, even though it wasn't even edgy in most cases, and they would not behave the exact same way if it was a man, if it was a male creator who did that. I'm serious. You guys like, oh man, I feel like I'm I feel like I'm coming up against some like some audience cope here. And I'm not trying to like obviously I'm talking to an audience as a whole, so you don't have to feel like you should introspect, but you don't have to personally feel like I'm targeting you and blaming you as an individual each one of you that's watching, but like guys, it's crazy. Okay, there are, oh my God, like I don't even know, uh, like without even bringing up specific examples, there are so many guys who roll around edgy jokes all the time and do not face a complete shitstorm for it. And also, you can, again, you can just see at how crazy the, the derangement gets towards these people. The shit that was directed towards ContraPoints, no matter what you think of ContraPoints, it was like, it's like the, the most incredible focusing laser of anger and hatred. And that, that basically never happens to a, a creator on an equivalent size of ContraPoints. And even if it does, there's another thing, there's another aspect to it, okay? that people aren't talking about here, which is that um, that often a cis guy can survive a cancellation that a marginalized person like a trans woman cannot. Because if a trans woman gets canceled for a certain thing, there's nowhere else for them to go. Whereas a cis guy can just start pivoting to a more edgy audience that is explicitly discriminatory and will explicitly look the other way. And I'm not saying that you should be able to pivot to worse things. I'm just pointing out that um, that's a real thing and it does impact the world. And it does absolutely mean that the deck is stacked on an individual survival level towards marginalized people. People are willing, yeah, people are willing to basically uh, look the other way. Yeah, exactly. I'm not saying you personally were coping. I'm just I'm just trying to explain because I'm seeing a lot of sentiments in chat. You could talk about Russell Brand. All right, let's continue.
start to self-censor ourselves, to cater our content to a white male audience, especially as it's more lucrative to do so since men make up the majority of BreadTube viewership. So we might start to create dry, theory-heavy content, taking a hard stance about capitalism and class, burying our emotional selves, and making ourselves as attractive as possible to the male gaze. There's your answer right there, Straw Hat Monty. Straw Hat Monty asks, I mean, is there anyone stopping Contra from videos other than herself? I feel like she up if she uploaded, she'd be fine. Right there. What was just explained right here, the pressure that, that starts to mount up on how you talk about your videos. Your videos are no longer just, uh, you, you lose confidence in your ability to create. This is something I've experienced. I've talked about this explicitly on stream, where as time has gone on, I've felt more stress about streaming because I don't feel like I can speak as freely as I used to think. When I ca first came into the space, I didn't have all of this, like, there wasn't like a paranoia flow floating over me uh, that was going, oh my God, they're gonna get you for this one. Oh my God, do you remember what happened when you got, when, when somebody jumped on you and misinterpreted that? And so it builds up over time and the ability to create gets harder and harder because you spend time rewriting and rewriting and rewriting and rethinking and going, oh, I didn't do that quite right. It starts to suck the joy out of creation. It starts to make you burn out. has spoken about how when she first started uploading she made more off the cuff wow i have not pre-watched this by the way but wow that's literally this is literally what i was just talking about casual videos but after the sexist comments and harassment she received about using filler words and her presentation, she slowly started to curate her videos to be more in line with the breadtube acceptable masculinist content. And I'm often getting well-intentioned advice to be louder, more dominant and assertive in my videos, aka act more like a man. In other words, it's the same thing we've constantly seen. I don't know if I agree with that framing. I don't, but but yes, that is what most people mean when they say that. I don't think that it's actually true that like men are more aggressive, but that is what people mean when they say that. Been with feminism since its inception. Rather than getting us all to value non-cis men ways of being, the onus is on women to aspire to the ways of being and values of men. Feminist author Susan Green put this really succinctly in a Rev Left Radio podcast episode when she said, The women's movement, like so many, I think, movements for social change, make a very correct observation, which is there's something wrong here. And there was something really wrong with the way things were. The problem was the solution, in my opinion, was not correct. The solution was, in order to solve this problem, we as women have to become more like men. Mm. And so women entered the workforce and kind of left the home and adopted the values of patriarchy. And so... Although the women's movement ended up creating a lot of what I call patriarchs and drag mm. because the, the values of the feminine still continue to be undervalued. What happened through the women's movement is the being realm, the inner realm, emotion, connecting, intuition, the body, which had always been considered second class, it was still considered second class. Mm. And so we just get a continuation of all the problems of patriarchy. What I began to understand is the external patriarchy is bad enough, but inside of us, we all have an inner patriarch. And until we address the inner patriarch, I don't think anything's gonna change. And for me, the problem with the women's movement was the inner patriarch never got addressed. And I know- I don't 100% agree um, with, with all of the wording there, but I think I understand what's being said. Um, which is that 
uh, things that are traditionally considered feminine are still stigmatized, and that the women's movement was basically uh, forced to, uh, uh, as, a, as the only position, as a terms of liberation, to say, uh, if you really, if you want to be liberated, well then, you have to abandon these traditionally feminine things which we still stigmatize. I don't 100% agree with the uh, with the wording from Susan Green, but I think I, I think charitably I understand what she's saying. So at this point, some of you are probably thinking, well, my work just isn't that good. I'm just fitter, and perhaps there is some truth to that. I still have a lot to improve on, and not everyone is going to like my content, and that's perfectly valid. But I also think it's important to investigate why do you think this content is not as good? Is it because you're used to associating a strong masculine presence with authority, power and politics? Are you used to having your worldview mirrored and reproduced so that when you see content that isn't geared towards white male tastes, you feel affronted? What is it within yourself that thinks less of content by marginalised people? Or maybe you're thinking, I just haven't heard of your channels, it's not my fault, it's the algorithm. But why haven't you heard of them? What voices are you surrounding yourself with? What are you telling the algorithm you do and don't want to see? That's a part of it, but also, the algorithm is biased, okay? The algorithm is goddamn biased, okay? Listen to me, let me tell you, okay? the fucking algorithm, I will watch a Vosh video and the algorithm will recommend me some insane fucking garbage from like center-right channels uh, instead of like the, the, the plethora of trans channels that also are connected to Vosh's community and will uh, and talk about similar issues or, or more explicitly talk about issues that Vosh has touched on. The algorithm is in it of itself curated sex, uh, 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 sexism. Yeah, Rhodes points out, you get ads for epic times and crap. It's ridiculous. So it is, it isn't, it, it is, the algorithm does get biased by people refusing to, to intentionally go out of their, um, out of their, uh, reach, but also the algorithm itself was built on biased terms in the first place. Really? The Epic Times puts ads on my videos sometimes? God damn. I wish I could ban those, but it's really hard to do that. Joseph Gray says, Yeah, I got recommended a Charlie Kirk video from a Vosh video long before I got recommended a Xena and Poppy video. Yeah. Felixer says, yep, this is true. I only watch leftist or cute animal and crafting content, and I watch about 50-50 men and women, and I still get shoveled right-wing stuff from mostly men content creators all the time. Yeah, it's really bad. It's really bad. Whose values are embedded in the way the algorithm prioritizes content? And what are you doing to challenge the structural exclusions that might exist? Dame Vamp says, I watch your videos and the algorithm gives me, and I literally mean this, destiny. Um, yeah. Part of the reason is because people who are obsessed with people like me will make a ton of videos so that they crowd you out of the algorithm. It's fucking insane. I talked about this explicitly where people who are insanely obsessed spread misinformation about me and use their already existing algorithm pressure to make it impossible to break into the algorithm. It's stupid and it's fucking malicious. Redtube seems to have a general disregard for feminism. Often this manifests in a class reductionism where there's an assumption that as soon as we have a classless society, 
all other social issues like patriarchy, racism and transphobia will simply wither away. So a separate push for so-called identity politics is seen as unnecessary and a distraction from the key goal of achieving a socialist or communist society. When Double Chinzy, thank you very, very much for the tier one sub. Remember, my channel thrives and lives off of viewer support. So if you are here and enjoying it, consider throwing a few dollars through my website or through YouTube to my channel so that I can continue to pay my bills. And also, if you've been enjoying this, make sure that you press like on my channel and press subscribe. And of course, at the end, I will be asking you to go press uh, subscribe and like on Catherine's channel as well as leave nice comments. So far, we are about uh, approaching the halfway point of this video and this video has been very good. So um, I am very comfortable in saying uh, share the love. Let's continue. Wow, well, that's really good to hear, Alison Albright. Unfortunately, I feel like you might be in the, in the minority, which kind of sucks. Well, that's good at least, Straw Hat Monty. I'm good to hear that. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Feminism is brought up, it's often used instrumentally as a tool to garner attention to other issues and then conveniently forgotten at other times. Like it's okay to tokenistically bring up how women are impacted by class, not because you really care about them, but in order to further your agenda of a communist revolution. Through doing more co-ed organizing, I realized that women's issues were kind of put to the side or not centered enough or maybe taken for granted or lumped in with the larger political project. Yeah, absolutely. And I've I found that to be true as well. In a lot of radical left wing organizations, there will be sort of a an assumption, at least in some organizations, that because we're already radicals, like feminism is already built in, I don't need to spend much time thinking about it or interrogating myself on my blind spots as, you know, perhaps a man in those spaces. And I think that's a, a critical error that a lot of times ends entire organizations. Even when bread tubers aren't outright class reductionists, there's often a subtle class reductionism where people talk about social issues whilst failing to acknowledge how they intersect with... Also, we should come up with a new term and we should call it Democrat reductionism. And that's when this happens, but it boils down to like, yeah, but we need to organize for the Democratic Party, so shut the fuck up. And it's like, even people will say this even against people who actively encourage their audience, like myself, to go and vote for Joe Biden or whatever. People will be like, shut the fuck up. The word is liberal, yeah, but you know. Other systems of oppression, like patriarchy, I've done this too. I've made videos about the causes of climate change without acknowledging how climate change intersects with other issues like patriarchy and white supremacy that conditions white men into the conquest, control and colonization of the earth. And I've made videos about dismantling capitalism without acknowledging that capitalism is a logical extension of thousands and thousands of years of patriarchy based on hierarchy, competition, and power. In the same way, we can't really talk about being anti-police, anti-military, and anti-the Israeli state without acknowledging that the values that undergird this violence are inherently patriarchal. I've also noticed a worrying trend of vulgar anti-feminism, where when feminism is brought up, it's usually only talked about in the context of critique, only ever drawing attention to its worst elements. Of course, there are many things that absolutely should be criticised about many iterations of feminism, like its racism and transphobia, but if our only engagement with feminism is via critique, it gives a lot of leverage to the dismissal of feminism altogether. When I think it's one of the most important movements of the 20th century, we should be able to do both, be critical, but also open to learning from and being humble torch carriers to this incredible lineage. 
so much of left-wing cultural work today is to try to re re-show people coming up that mm-hmm. actually you do belong to a fascinating beautiful gorgeous tradition of radical you know feminists and workers and you know anti-colonialists and um you know people that stood up to power and wealth and fought back and many of them laid down their lives for it and that tradition has been wiped out but we can reclaim it when feminism is talked about in a positive way Another issue I've come across is that only certain forms of feminism are accepted. Leftist men can dunk on right-wing people because they can prove their dominance by inflicting humiliation, pain, or visible signs of inferiority upon others. They can stick up for women being harassed because to do so is protective, chauvinistic, charming. They can take to the streets in abortion protests because to do so is tough and strong. But woe betide the man who rejects masculine conditioning and embraces softness, emotionality, and vulnerability. This is or also the true man too. who intentionally works towards abolishing the gender binary. Or the man. Damn. Who Cooking. steps forward fucking cooking, true. Word ...and takes responsibility for the fact that he has harmed women. In other words, it's okay to display your feminism, but only so long as it reinforces your masculinity and doesn't challenge you in any way. When feminism is so trivialized and undervalued, it doesn't take long before it's thrown under the bus completely. For example, many creators feel justified in sexualizing women, using ironic misogyny, sending their followers on harassment campaigns against women, laughing at feminists, and using words like bitch and slut when talking about women they don't like. It seems there's a pervasive idea that sexism and misogyny are okay as long as it's against the right people. And speaking from personal experience, when everyone else is ridiculing feminism, it can be very easy as a woman to start to distance ourselves from feminism and feminists by resorting to a cool girl mentality, where we're like, I'm not like other girls, I don't care if you make sexist jokes. I'm not going to call you out or challenge you. I want to be one of the guys. Capitalism and class is the only thing I care about. Bruh, red scare moment. Fucking red scare moment. Only some of you are gonna even know what I'm talking about, but fucking red scare moment in a nutshell. That entire podcast is basically this right here. I think this is an understandable survival strategy because we are so frequently accused of making false accusations, being boring, emotional, irrational, or bitchy. In the same way, I also think the dismissal of feminism from a man can also be understandable. If as a man you've been told your whole life that patriarchy is a privilege and all you feel is pain, you feel justifiably resentful. And when no one has shown you empathy for your suffering, it's hard to have empathy for others. It can be easy to cling to just focusing on class, the one way you, as a man, are marginalised to validate your sense of victimhood. All this to say, I think it's so important we all get curious about where our dismissal or devaluation of feminism is coming from. Do we not mention feminism or identity issues very often? If so, why not? Do we have some form of class reductionism, vulgar anti-feminism, or cool girl mentality? If so, what is it within ourselves that can't hold space for these issues? How does this manifest in ourselves and our work? And how can we challenge ourselves on that? This video is really good so far. I'm not gonna lie, I really like this video. And any all, all the people in chat who said they were like, who were like afraid of this video, honestly, aren't you glad that you stuck around and watched it with Demon Mama? 
Demon Mama has the bravery to watch the videos that no one else will. That's how, that's how you know you're in the good spot. That's why you should fucking subscribe to the Demon Mama. The majority of BreadTube creates a very masculinist framing of how to create social change. Work done in the traditionally masculine public sphere, like agitating, organizing, direct action, critical mass support, large-scale projects, and violence, is granted more value than work done in the private domestic feminine sphere. Dark Slime says, first time in the Demon Mama live chat. Ooh, woo, oh, whoa. Well, welcome. And also, I've seen a lot of new chatters tonight. Welcome to the live chat. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for being here. I'm sure you are discovering that it's a really cool time to come hang out and that we not only have a lot of fun, I make lots of jokes and make goofs um, and meme and whatever, but also that I try to talk about things that are super interesting and get your brain juices flowing. Don't forget to subscribe. Like caring for others, raising the next generation in radical new ways, self-healing, or building the revolution from the ground up. To be clear, I'm not saying there is anything inherently feminine or inherently masculine about any of these actions. The point is that under patriarchy, external, visible work done out there in the world is always granted more importance than work done in the internal, relational, emotional realm. And this creates a situation, in my experience, where many people have great politics in theory, which often doesn't translate into how they live their values on a day-to-day -day basis with the people around them in the here and now. I also worry that if masculine values dictate the only valid means of engagement, leftist spaces can become incredibly inhospitable to anyone who doesn't fit this very narrow masculinity. For example, my conditioning taught me that as a woman I should be nice, sweet, soft, never angry, never make a fuss. As a result, I've always been pretty pathetic in protests, occupations, direct actions. I'm just not cut out for these types of actions, but I do think my way of being has helped me facilitate transformative justice, provide emotional labour, create leftist art. Does this make me any less of a leftist? I think it's dangerous to valorise certain forms of engagement as inherently superior to others, because it can end up making a large proportion of the population feel like they have no space on the left. And then people wonder. Too Clever by Half says, She's attacking the wrong thing. YouTube sets the ground rules for engagement. We pay attention to what we like, and you can't blame male YouTubers for this. But she isn't. She's, the title of the video is BreadTube has a patriarchy problem. But BreadTube isn't just the creators. BreadTube is, and we've talked about this on this channel a lot, BreadTube is a, a consumer category. You don't get to just buy, you don't get to like pick a badge and go, I'm BreadTube now. People lump you into BreadTube whether you even want to be there or not. It's a consumer category. The audience of BreadTube, and I think this entire video has almost exclusively fixated actually more on audiences and reaching out to the audience than to the creators. Although, I will admit some of this, this advice does apply to the creators as well as the audience. Yeah. I think I think this video is really good at addressing the systemic issues and not pointing the finger at any one person. I'm actually quite uh, I'm actually quite impressed by by how this video has gone. She talks about certain creators, even if she won't name them, we all know who they are. I don't believe that. I don't think we've seen a single example of that so far. But also, if you believe that to be true, maybe that says something about the creators that you're thinking of. Because I, I don't think there's, like, there have been creators that I've thought of at certain points in this video, but I don't think any of this is like a, like a, like a veiled criticism of a specific creator.
Stardust317 says the ironic misogynist comment was absolutely a Voosh reference. I don't know about that. Ah, uh, okay, look, I'm gonna be completely honest. You might, that might be a little bit of your own bias leaking in and your own paranoia. Um, and I'm not trying to be mean, but like, there's multiple really big creators who openly engage in ironic misogyny. Chariot says, by the way, great to see you, Chariot. Always happy to have you. It's always a genuine honor to have you in my, uh, in my chat. I've been trying to be quiet and respectful for this segment, but I do want to say I feel Catherine's video is is fairly or is very one sided. She says she isn't calling these things inherently masculine or feminine, and that's fine. But there isn't much commentary about how masculine women are hung out to dry. Not to be overly vulnerable, but I felt a little abandoned by this video. It felt like an analytical neglect of how women like myself exist in these spaces, which, to be frank, has been very hard on me. I see where you're coming from. That's why I was. That's why I brought up earlier the part about how um, people got super, super mad at me for engaging in even like a little bit of in even small uh, or medium amounts of aggression. And God forbid I go to high aggression like some you know some content creators have built their entire platform off of. If I step into that category, people will freak out and say that I'm like like I'm having a meltdown. Um. So yeah, I do think there's a, I do think there's a, um, I do think there's a certain thing like that. And by the way, like I acknowledge that some people read my style as fairly masculine. I do insult people sometimes. I, I am aggressive in my critiques. I can be confrontational. That's especially true back when I was doing debate content. Maybe I've toned it down a little bit over time. Um, so I, I completely understand where you're coming from. Um, and, uh, I, and maybe it's maybe I've been a little uh, a little bit too charitable on certain aspects of this video, um, just because uh, for me I kind of read it into the, into the discussions about double standards, where um, like when when it's been discussed that like m m like mask creators can get away with things that fem creators cannot, um, I kind of understood that to be like. Oh yeah, fem creators aren't allowed to show any sort of edge whatsoever. They're not allowed to show any sort of, uh, uh, you know, bluntness or confrontationality. Are those things masculine? They are. They are. Uh, they are categorized by society as masculine. Yes. Merrick Merrick Deville says also wonderful to see you Merrick another another person who I absolutely always feel honored to have in my chat uh, much love to you much love to you um, that's been my experience as well says Merrick it's okay to do or say anything about me because I'm aggressive and I think you've seen that I've absolutely seen that um, people treat you absolutely deranged like the most deranged i've ever seen in some cases when all you're doing is standing your ground you're not you you won't even be half as ag aggressive as as the way that some like oh my god on twitter there are there are there are like lefty dudes who will tweet the most callous and thoughtless shit and get like a tenth of the garbage that you'll get for being dead correct dead right precise with your language but being willing to confront somebody on their shit Mix Dizzy says, Chariot, I find your opinion helpful here because I just like how she paints women as being comfortable with ir ironic misogyny as having internalized misogyny rather than imagining they might genuinely prefer or enjoy edgy humor. I do think that there's some parts of this video that, that could be further elaborated on and I'm trying to be charitable. Like, I mean, I have been thinking about the fact that like, I mean, I do think that there's room for uh, humor 
and for humor and for styles of content that aren't super, super polished around the edges and avoid all potential problematic languages. Like I call people stupid, idiots, morons, dullards. I call people fucking uh, slobs, pieces of shit. I even call people bitches sometimes. I call them pussies sometimes too. Um, but I like to think that I do so in, in such a context that it's fairly apparent that I'm not uh, like, like I'm not acting on a deep, on like a level of like extreme misogyny. But I think that in some insults, it's very difficult to like avoid any problematic uh, interpretations whatsoever. Basically every insult has potentially problematic elements. Some are worse than others. I, I call some people cocks, dickheads, all kinds of stuff. Merrick, I will, I will always do my best to have solidarity with you. Um, I think you're based. Posadas John says she also referenced PF being harassed, which the only community and creator I'm familiar with being being accused of doing that implies Vosh. Maybe I'm cynical from many vitriolic attacks from leftists who couch it in a holier than thou and attitude, and she isn't implying anything. I mean, I don't think she's super implying anything. I think she's just pointing out that there was a deluge of anger against PF. And by the way, it wasn't just Vosh's community because the PF conversation also continued over into uh, uh, Destiny Sphere, and as we know, the destiny or the destiny sphere and the vosh sphere don't exactly get along but pf got roasted over there as well because she went and did multiple interviews over there as well yeah so i don't know Yeah, I do think that there are, I, anyway, not to get too hung up on this, because I want to make sure we still have time to play to play some Dark Souls after we talk about this video, but um, I do think that there are, are parts that this video could elaborate further on, but I think as far as addressing the core uh, argument here, I can understand what's going on with this, uh, with this video, and I think being charitable, I don't think that this video is intended to erase um uh, uh women who get who get called masculine or whatever i just think it probably could be a little more robust on that front i hope that's fair i do think it's a valid critique of this video a perfectly valid one and chariot if you make a video on this i would absolutely uh love that so and i would watch it i watch every single one of your videos so let's continue Oh, why so few women watch BreadTube or join leftist spaces? Privileging very public, visible visions of social change also perpetuates the great man theory of history that real change happens by one charismatic male leader who, through his brilliance, inspires followers and incites the revolution. I don't think anyone on BreadTube explicitly thinks they will be the next MLK, Che Guevara, or Marx, but I think the martyr as a... I am. <laughs> che Guevara, Marx, who was the other one? Who was the other one? Martin Luther King Jr., no. <laughs> Morons! Compared to me, they're nothing! I am the future. Che Guevara or Marx. But I think the martyr, as opposed to the trickster archetype, is still very much alive in our communities. The martyr archetype is serious, macho, hierarchical, perfectionistic, fetishizing suffering, and literally dying for the cause. The trickster True archetype, salad. on the other hand, is transgressive, fun, light, artful, playful, and doesn't take things so seriously. The right has effectively mobilized the trickster through people like Trump and Boris, who are classic, sneaky, funny, cheeky, rule breakers, using tricks and hoaxes. So clearly there's a political appetite for the trickster, and yet the left is still stuck on being martyrs, full of guilt and sacrifice and a better than complex. 
I just wonder what possibilities. This is a this is also a Christian problem, by the way. This is a Christianity overlap, where uh, martyrdom, sa self sacrifice, is seen as the correct path, uh, and. Uh, it's interesting because that type of approach, it makes it the easiest to maintain patriarchal power. Because if you're doing a heroic act by dying, it just so, uh, uh, it, it just so helps. It just, it, you know, it helps that, that, that if you convince heroes that the best way for them to do their thing is to fucking die and disappear out of the world. It makes sure that the hierarchical power maintains. But yes, I actually, um, I actually would agree with you, clever, too clever by half. Too clever by half says I think that Vosh is a bit of a trickster, and that's why so many lefties hate him. I do think, I do think he is. I do think Vosh gets silly with it, and that's one of the reasons why I like Vosh, and I have a lot of fun uh, uh, with Vosh generally. This could open up for us if we embraced playful exploration instead of rigid dogmas, collaboration instead of individualism, joy instead of misery. I think the trickster achieves more with her vivacity than the martyr does with his solemnity. The martyr approach to social change is also evident in BreadTube as a very intellectual rather than embodied approach to liberation. It's all about proving why you're right and why others should join you via the domain of reason, fact, logic, objectivism, science, and the intellect. There's absolutely nothing inherently wrong with these things, but my concern is that these values are so reified that it leaves very little room for non-material, non-intellectual dimensions to revolution. Many indigenous cultures across the globe, for example, time and time again emphasize how their ferocious spiritual bond with the earth is one of the driving forces behind their resistance movements. Leftist theorists like Sonia Renee Taylor, Adrian Marie Brown, Bell Hooks, and Audre Lorde emphasize the importance of the emotional dimension to revolution via the power of radical love, trauma work, and pleasure activism. And I think a lot of truth lies in Percy Shelley's statement that poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world. In other words, yes, we need to engage people via the intellect, but often what persuades and mobilizes people even more is that which touches our hearts and spirits, that which is felt on a visceral, embodied level. But because these things are racialized and feminized as irrational and emotional, they aren't granted the same level of importance. This intellectual dimension to revolution is also evident in the hypersectarianism and dogmatism of the left too, where there are thousands of theoretical debates about which tendency or which theorists make you a real leftist. Of course, I'm not saying accept all ideas willy-nilly, they all to varying degrees deserve scrutiny and critique. My issue is that on BreadTube, theoretical differences all too often devolve into competitive theoretical battles full of machismo, bravado, and ego, tearing each other down over minor differences with an air of arrogance over having won. These approaches allow no room for mutual exchange based yeah, on a willingness true. to listen, learn, and grow, which are considered more feminine actions. It's like they're not really interested in ending oppression, they're interested in being the ones that get to oppress. To me, a lot of 